welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin Edmonds and you're watching the Enhanced Don't Distract channel where we talk about church tech, how to enhance your ministry with technology and not distract from it. In today's episode, I'm sure you've all bought one of those brand new sparkly M1 Macs, whether it's the Mac Mini or a MacBook or a MacBook Air, something along those lines, and you've discovered Oh my gosh, I can only do one display on the laptops extra, and I can only do two displays on the Mac minis, and one of those displays is the one that's right in front of me. So, how do we get multiple displays out of an M1 Mac? Today, we're going to answer that question. But first, make sure you subscribe, smash that subscribe button. Uh, we have a Facebook group now. If you go and look in the group for Enhance Don't Distract, uh, that group is designed for you guys to be able to go ask questions, say, hey, this is what I'm dealing with, or hey, I wanna be able to get here, but I don't know how to, and get some advice from me, Sean, some other trusted people, grow the community. Uh, me and Sean are gonna get the podcast back up and running. So yeah, make sure you guys check out the Facebook group, make sure you check out the podcast, and hands don't distract. Me and Sean would like to answer your questions. So we have a text number now. So if you guys would text area code 616, and that's 370-3930, text those questions. Sean and I will answer them on the podcast for you guys because we'd love to, for you guys to interact. Also, in the description of this video, you can find another way for you guys to support us. That's by buying t-shirts. That's right. We have Enhanced Don't Distract t-shirts. We left the front blank so that when you buy the shirt, you can get your own church logo on the front if you'd like. So guys, I would really do appreciate that. Let's get into it. Today's episode is also sponsored by EM Technologies, where you can reach out to us at emtmi.com and buy things, get uh, consultations, education. If you need some training, we can come out and do that. That's who this video is sponsored by. So let's get into it. All right, so there's no fancy intro anymore because that's an old one. So we are in the middle of updating that. So we'll get there. This is a Sonic Express. What this is, is this is a little chassis. It's got a little power supply. I don't know if you can see that here. And then a Thunderbolt slash USB-C cable. And then uh, I have in there a little um, Decklink Duo card that has five SDI ports on it. Uh, they are not all ins. There is actually only four outs on there. They can, they're configurable on the card that I got. Uh, so this guy literally USB C's into my MacBook Air and then my MacBook Air sees four displays because that's how I have it set up. So let's scroll over to the computer and take a look at how we set this up. What you're gonna find is when you connect this, you need to download Blackmagic Video Desktop uh, application, which I'll put the link to that uh, in the description of this video. So you're gonna wanna download that, make sure that that's uh, rocking and rolling. Once you get that open, this is what this looks like. Uh, so you're gonna see that this is gonna show up as four different devices. It's only one single card. Uh, you can kind of see what this looks like here. Uh, it's just a PCIe card, uh, like you would stick into a computer, and that's exactly what this is designed for. Um, and so it, should, it kind of shows you all these things. So I've renamed all of these. Um, but yeah, so let's go into the first one here, which you can indicate here. You can also throw it into uh, list mode here, and then you can hit the little button here. So video output, uh, this is what you're gonna kind of set some th things to. I didn't really change many settings in here. Um, all I kind of did is I came in here. I want this to be 444. I may change that once I actually get into my room and get that all set up. Um, I'm going to leave this as 1080p progressive conversions. I'm not going to convert this to anything, but it does give you the option if you are dealing with some older systems to go from 1080 down to SD or 720 to SD or 720 uh, to HD. And then it also lets you go uh, kind of back the other way around too, uh, if you would like. So I'm gonna leave both of those in on because I don't need to convert anything. Uh, connection mapping. So this is where you have, uh, where you're gonna tell it what you want it to be. So I want this one specifically to be SDI one. Uh, and then I'm gonna go to the about. This is where it's gonna tell you, hey, this is the last time it was updated. I did not go and check and see if this uh, needed an update. So I'll do that after this video, but for the main purpose. Uh, product notes, so this is what I did. I did main display and then one, and I labeled that one so that I knew that it's output number one. 
You can go in here to, and put in all your information. This honestly probably wouldn't be a bad thing for you guys to do uh, because if you do have a problem with the card and you need to get uh, it maintenanced or send it back for repair, uh, you can definitely, you know, get that, you know, like, hey, who did I buy this from? Who, what's their phone number? I've done that too many times where I've bought something and two years later, I'm like, oh crap, I buy things from like three different people. So, um, but yeah, so I named this main display number one. Um, and then I, I'm i running 1080p at 24, so that's what I've selected this at. You will see that that doesn't really mean, mean much. So I went through and, uh, and labeled all of these how I wanted them labeled. So let's get into ProPresenter. Here we are, we are in ProPresenter, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go the long way around. We're gonna hit uh, ProPresenter up at the top here, go to Preferences, go to Screens, uh, and then go into Configure Screens here. You can get to there by hitting the Screen button up here too. Um, but yeah, so here we are, main uh, screen number one. Uh, so we're gonna, let's rename this so that, just so that we know. So projector, uh, and then output, and then we can see our four Blackmagic outputs here. So we've selected main display number one, and we get to tell it what resolution and frame rate uh, that we want it to be at. So if we, because we're main projector, maybe we wanna be 1080p at 60. So let's do 1080p at 60. And then let's say here, I want to, this is the ATEM. So I wanna have a full ATEM picture for from ProPresenter. So what this is gonna do is, this is to ATEM, uh, full screen, great. And then that's at 24, cause that's what the ATEM is set to. And then we're gonna do another one here where we go lower thirds and we're gonna be 1080, 24. And this is gonna rename this to lower thirds. So uh, next thing is we're gonna go stage display. We're gonna select that, tell it, you know, probably be at 60 cause it's most likely. Boom, and that's how you do this. This is super simplistic. Uh, there may be a little bit more uh, cause I'm not hooked up to all my stuff right now. So uh, what I'll do is I'll hook this up uh, when I get to my church and, and test it all. But this should be this simple as it needs to be. Um, literally plug it in and go and just do some labeling and then ProPresenter sees each one of those outputs as its own output. All right, so the configuration between the card and the Sonnet, we're in the 13 to $1,600 range. Now, I know a lot of you guys are saying, well, hey, Justin, that doesn't seem like a cheaper route than just buying a M1 Max MacBook Pro. I, I understand that, hear me out. This is the reason why I think this is the better option is what you don't have to worry is that when the computer gets upgraded, is it gonna have the same problem? Um, you can buy a Mac mini for $700. Uh, the monitor that I have is a 32 inch LG uh, color accurate monitor from that I bought from Costco on sale for $200. So I'm $900 into that and it's a 32 inch monitor. And I don't know if you've ever run ProPresenter for like very complicated, uh, events or anything like that, but the more space you have where you can have Planning Center open and your iTunes or Spotify or whatever, uh, and then be able to maybe monitor a couple other things, being on a 16 inch MacBook uh, doesn't really give you the capability of being able to do that. Uh, I like the desktop feel uh, because it's stationary and then that way my stuff can't walk away and someone borrows it or whatever. Um, but yeah, the idea is though, when I plug in a HDMI adapter to my MacBook, I am limited to the frame rates and the resolutions that the MacBook will allow me. MacBooks will not allow you to do 2398 or 5994. So the big thing that the Sonnet gives us is gives us those broadcast frame rates. It shows me 1080p at 2398 or 1080p at 5994. I don't have to worry about any weird conversions or anything like that. It's also SDI, which tends to be a lot more reliable than HDMI with their handshakes, those type of things. The other nice thing about this Sonnet is that it is capable of passing up to 40 gigabits a second over the USB-C slash uh, Thunderbolt uh, 4 port. So it is a Thunderbolt 4 port. I have a Thunderbolt 4 cable that's plugged into this, which means that this technically, I can buy up to a 4K card to go in here. So when we are moving down the road, the Sonnet most likely is gonna be perfectly fine. I can pull the card out, put a new card in, and be happy to go. There's two card slots in here as well. So I could technically change things up, do a lot of different things. Uh, that's actually not true. This one is only, this is the Express only, this one could. Um, 
So I can be able to, to switch the card out if I need to. Just the flexibility and the moldability of this is just far superior than buying a MacBook. Uh, I, and like I said, MacBooks are, are awesome for you if you're on the go, moving around, all those kind of things, they're awesome. But most likely that's not what's gonna be happening. You're going to be installing this and just leaving it there. And that's a big deal for this guy. Uh, this is a great installation piece. Yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. It's just a great installation piece. And it gives us the capability of not having to deal with uh, just the Mac uh, configuration for frame rates and resolutions. So, all right, I'm starting to ramble. Again, guys, make sure you smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, check out the Facebook group, buy the merch, get ready for the conference that's coming up, pay attention, and the phone number, which I'll read to you again because I haven't memorized it yet, sorry. Area code 616-730-3930. Me and Sean will be answering those questions as they come in on our podcast, which uh, reminds me, go and give us a five-star review on the podcast. If you're listening to this on the podcast, go to the YouTube channel, watch the video. Uh, guys, I hope this is helpful. Let me know down in the comments if there's anything else that you guys are trying to figure out how to do so I can help you. And until next time, I'm Justin. Make sure you're enhanced.